The 6.5 is on the road here at Intel corporate headquarters here in Silicon Valley. And Dan, we are talking about our favorite topic, and that is AI. Did you want me to finish your sentence? Please. Yeah, I thought you were like landing me up because I was going to say artificial intelligence. There we go. You nailed it there. But it's amazing how the conversation from, again, I'll, I'm going to steal a little what you say, which is, Good. you know, AI is not actually new. It's based on algorithms that are 40 years old. But this latest wave of generative AI has really uh, brought excitement uh, to everybody, not just the the tech community, but but also the business community as well. Yeah, I mean, the next wave is all about value. Companies are trying to figure out how to implement this, this technology, how to derive value, how to measure, yeah. create ROI. This has become a board level imperative. Yes. Most companies, almost all companies now have a board level imperative. So that means CEOs are thinking about it. CFOs are thinking about it. COOs are thinking about it. And of course, our friends in the chief information office are thinking quite a bit about it as well. That's right. They have a lot of things to think about and contend with. And, and this first wave kind of kicked off in the data center. Uh, but what has happened, and, and this is very natural in all technology inflection point, it moves from the data center uh, to the endpoints. And AI PCs are some of the most exciting, uh, awesome things uh, to come out in terms of their potential, uh, delivering real-time incremental value uh, to workers out there for efficiency and even the potential to drive top line revenue. And, and that is one of the big things on the CIO agenda is how do I implement, what kind of strategy do I need to have? And I have Todd from Intel and Megan from Insight to have this conversation. Welcome to the 6.5. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Sure. Yeah, you you heard my preamble. I think I saw a little nodding out of the corner of my eye. Well, they are sitting right um, here. They had to listen. <laughs> we're kind of in alignment. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it is a captive audience for sure. And so, as they were, you know, as you're listening, I hope hope you were sort of feeling, but you know, what we're saying here. But what we really want to do is sort of expand on these thoughts. Look, the CIO is in a really interesting juxtaposition right now. It went from sort of a period where they were very cost conscious, how to be most efficient, you know, delivering IT that kept businesses running to, oh my gosh, be, IT is the business. I and mean, sometimes you hear things like every company is a tech company. And, you know, while we can debate how true that is or is not, what we do know is tech is the exponential driver. It's deflationary in terms of helping companies scale, and it's exponential in terms of helping companies drive more productivity. Megan, I'm curious, though, because we want to focus yeah. here on the PC, on the device. Yeah. At Insight, you're very, very focused on helping deliver value to many enterprises all over the world. How are you thinking and how are your clients thinking about this AI PC wave? And what do they think they're going to gain as they make this transition? The thing that we're really helping our clients think through is the AI PC is not going to be uniform for everyone, right, within a company. So we're taking very much a persona-based approach to testing the AI PCs in our own environment first. At Insight, we like to be client zero so that we yeah. can really come to our clients and say, hey, we looked at it in a way we would expect you to. You know, by persona, these are the departments that could be using it. This is the type of work that they perform. And this is a value or this is the distraction that we saw them in, uh, in Occur. And when we run into impediments to adoption, we really help them think about uh, this is how we got through it. So insights all in on AI. And to your point earlier, Pat, it's like it's just the point of it, things go from the cloud to the edge and back and yeah. forth. And so we see the adoption of the AI PC um, to be that you know edge component that we're here to help our clients adopt and get the maximum ROI. But we don't think it's universal. So we think it's very specific to uh, the role that a teammate has within their organization. And just to be just to put maybe a fine point in that, yeah. it can be like uh, uh, creatives. It could be financial. Experts, Absolutely. human resources. Are these the personas that you're talking about? Yeah. And, you know, the one thing that we're excited about is I think everybody leaned in mostly on the productivity gains associated with it, which we know is going to be awesome. Right. But um, we're more interested in some of the transformational things like the gr revenue growth opportunities, the client affinity, you know, that right. they're just going to be obsessed yeah. with your brand because they feel so close to it. So those are the use cases that we're kind of maximizing as a priority for our own organization. And we hope our clients do as well. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree uh, that 
enterprises, you know, they have 50,000, 100,000 fleets they need to roll out. They're more conservative, obviously, than consumers and even uh, small businesses, right? So uh, there's a lot of education that has to go in to not only capture the opportunity upside, but also de-risk on the other side. Uh, and I know Intel has played a role uh, in, in this education um, for enterprises for as long as I've been uh, in the industry. And I'm just curious, how, are you, how is Intel specifically doing this, educating, getting the beaches ready for everybody to come on uh, for AIPCs? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, first of all, it's really getting, building awareness with our OEM partners around just what an AIPC can do. Right. And, you know, in, 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 in some respects, it's kind of simple in terms of you've now got three engines. You got a CPU, GPU, and an NPU. Right. You have all this compute capability, all this AI inferencing mm -hmm. at your fingertips that you didn't have before. Right. We've got content creators that are using all three engines in parallel to do things much faster. Mm -hmm. right. We've got um, collaboration apps where you're moving things like background segmentation off of the CPU onto the NPU, saving over a watt of power. So right. more battery life. Yeah. But then you've got security yeah. ISVs that are saying, hey, you know what? I can take that malware detection. I can run that locally on the NPU, not have the round trip right. from the device to the cloud and back, so lower latency, lower cost. And then we're seeing manageability partners that are all, all also moving their workloads from the cloud to the client. So there's just a tremendous you know, opportunity now. It's funny because we always worried about the cloud and thin clients and what's everything's moving to the cloud. Now we're seeing the ISVs actually looking at their business model. Mm -hmm. Where can we save costs? What can we move to run locally? A hundred percent. The more that's done on, on the local device, and it is funny, I always like to look at the industry trends. It's kind of like an accordion, right? Like comes out and then it comes back in. And then, mm -hmm. but ultimately uh, processing finds the right place and invariably it, it is closest to the data as, as it can be. And it, I'm, I'm seeing that transition as well. Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done about workload, workload placements, and of course, there's these kind of broader thoughts right now about power, sustainability, right? So if we can do something efficiently, do it local, avoid that extra sort of egress and tax and power utilization, yeah. companies are thinking about it. They've got a, you know, accountability to their sustainability plans. They've got accountability to you know, being really intelligent, of course, fiduciary to the bottom line of their companies. Right. Like, hey, if I don't need to do that, don't do that. Cloud sprawl is a real thing. And of course, it's great when we see the industry grow. It's great when we see the cloud grow. It's great when we see data center investment being made. But businesses are investing in tech to solve business problems, right? And so you have to be an enabler. Speaking of an enabler, so, you know, as you're sort of thinking about the AIPC being integrated yep. into these IT environments, kind of, what's your vision for that? I heard you talk about experiences and value. Does it happen? Are you seeing it happen quickly? Are you seeing it sort of happening on a gradual scale? Oh. You know, what's interesting is we've seen uh, the AIPCs be adopted fastest in the consumer space, which makes sense because sure. the enterprise obviously is having to do a significant amount of native software compatibility, app compatibility, securitization around it. But um, we're really bullish, like the speed of adoption into the enterprise we think is is pretty remarkable. Um, so we're, we're really bullish on it. It's going to happen a little later than I thought. I thought the second half of this year was going to be fairly explosive. I see it now more as second half of uh, next year where we're going to see the tremendous uplift in it. But uh Overall, at Insight, it's not just for us about the productivity gains. It's some of the things that are being introduced from an IT perspective is it's way easier from an asset management. They're being able to resolve issues with their remote users um, without them having to come into the office. So the manageability at the edge, I think, is huge. Um, we're getting a lot of great feedback from teams that are using it from a remote perspective uh, that the collaboration uh, is better. And so the thing that we always are thinking about is like, this is kind of the worst version of the AI PC <laughs> and it's going to just take months for it to be better and better and better. It's, it's crazy. The level of adoption. I mean, the great news is it's going to get better and yeah. most of it can done, can be done with software. And if you have yeah. that platform there and, you know, enterprises can't get, can't get left behind in that. 
you know, you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the time it takes, right? I, you know, consumer, you know, we're going to dive in. They're buying AAPCs yeah. now, a lot of small businesses. And there are enterprises who are adopting, uh, you know, the first, fir- first wave as well. Uh, one of the things before we get to mass deployments and they turn on a lot of these features, been a lot of conversations overall in AI about security and privacy. You know, sometimes it's put up there with governance, uh, which is privacy. And, and like all great technology, there's always two sides of the coin, which is, oh, my gosh, look at all the value. It's like, oh my gosh, well, what can happen if, if I'm able to do all this stuff uh, on this PC platform? What is the potential for more information to spill? right out and, and, and a lot quicker. And I'm curious, uh, how are you looking uh, at privacy and security uh, in relation to the IPC? I mean, it, it actually helps it, right? And yeah. I, and I would even add, you know, Todd, how are those CIOs and CISOs? Because this is really where the rubber meets the road, right? right? You're thinking about it, they're thinking about it. And of course, the CISO, which is an incredibly big role in this data privacy era, you have to think about it too. I didn't mean to jump on you. Just no, 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 want to make sure we, we get that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, how you know how you're architecting AI for your organization. I think that's you know just a big phase yeah, that we're in right now. You know, how do you avoid having you know shadow AI within your org? Everybody's off doing their own. It's already thing. started, by it's the started. way. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's it is right. it's, it's happening. And so, in terms of you know how do you look at what do you want to run on on prem? Okay, AIPC is great. I mean, you can keep it local. You right. can protect it. You can protect your IP. If you're someone that's using an LLM with RAG and your own IP and content, yes. and you want to protect that and keep it local, it's secure. Right. Then you start looking at, okay, how do you use your server clusters on-prem with your clients? And how are you getting that goodness from one endpoint propagated out to other endpoints as they get smarter? It's it's an it's a it's a big opportunity, and the big thing I'll say on that is just start now, because the the, the sooner you start, the sooner you start figuring out, okay, how do I want to how do I want to architect this? What's my clients, my local strategy, but what's my cloud client hybrid strategy as well? Yeah, I see such a massive use case too for things like highly regulated industries. Mm-hmm. What ends up in the device? What ends up in which cloud? This is going to be a massive consideration over the next few years, just because we there's so much policy around all of the AI yeah. uh, yep. that isn't form, formed yet that needs to be considered. And so AIPC actually gives some opportunity to decide where data sits and where it lives sure. or when it finds its way off the device and where it ends up going. Um, Megan, we have a few minutes left here, and I want to, I want to go back to that kind of CIO and I want to think about that ROI question, that cost benefit. When a new technology hits the market, there's always that sort of inflection. When do we dive in? Mm-hmm. Um, CIOs are driving this because they're they're not just the cost management center; they're the productivity driver. They're saying we have technology that's going to make your company drive more revenue, more productivity, more outcomes. What's the kind of calculus right now that you're hearing from the CIOs that you're talking to? Yeah, so I think people are getting more prescriptive. I know one thing that Intel's done really well with their vPro device is they actually have a calculation that says these are the things that we think you should be looking for that drives ROI into your environment. What's interesting to me is it's gone past the productivity gains that I was expecting and some of the insights and analytics that you get by being able to anticipate your customer needs or your teammates' needs. It's also the hardware. So the hardware has advanced with the AI PCs in the terms where they think the ROI associated with it, and they're kind of proving that out, that you could get a 200% ROI from moving from a traditional PC to an AI PC. Um, it's significant less downtime for individuals using the AI PCs. Uh, they're moving into cool things, like how quickly do they adopt? How much training and enablement does it take? So uh, the spectrum of what but the CIOs and to your point earlier, it's, it's really a full C-suite conversation. Everybody needs to have what they're doing with AI, with the board, whether you're the chief procurement officer or the chief human right. resource officer. So everyone's looking for that. But 
Um, the ones that are really the most interesting to me are the ones that are going to gain you market share, um, significant revenue growth. And so I think by the moment, uh, companies are getting more and more sophisticated with how they're measuring it. That's definitely how Insight's approaching it. Uh, we're piloting it and we've given it in a very prescriptive way, the AI PCs that we're rolling out to the people that have shown the highest propensity to use AI at Insight right. in the different departments. And we have a very prescriptive uh, list of questions and things that we're monitoring to see what the value is. That's how I think you adopt it well in the enterprise. Yeah. And I've always been a big fan of the customer zero use case. Yeah. Because it's that empathy. I mean, empathy sells. Yeah. I understand right. what you need because we've invested, we're trying it, we're doing it, here's the outcomes we're getting. I always feel more comfortable buying something from someone that's bought it themselves. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Megan, Todd, I want to thank you both so much for joining us here on The 6.5. five. Let's keep in touch. Let's do this again sometime. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you. This is the 6.5. We are on the road here at Intel Corporate Headquarters in beautiful Santa Clara, California. For Patrick Moore and myself, we got to say goodbye, but hit that subscribe button. Check out all the episodes here and stay with us. We'll see you all soon.